to it. We are also sending a loud and clear message out there to anyone who thinks about cheating in an election. If you cheat in an election, we will find you, we will track you down, and we will prosecute you to the full extent of the law. That was RNC co-chair Laura Trump threatening to prosecute anyone who commits election fraud. Just a few problems with that. First, she's not a prosecutor or a police officer. And her idea of election cheating is apparently when absentee ballots are counted after election day, or perhaps at all. Just another day at the dysfunctional RNC. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, AKA the Florida lawman here on the Midas Touch Network. Thank you for all your views and your likes and your comments. I love reading them. And let's discuss the RNC because when people talk about this election, they talk about the polls and it's Biden and Trump and age issues and immigration and so forth. But what they rarely talk about is the RNC versus the Democratic Party, where the Democrats have been raising lots of money. They have a good infrastructure in place. They've got competent people running the states and the National Party and on the Republican side, they have dismantled the RNC, the National Party, and they've replaced career uh, employees with handpicked cronies who are loyal to Donald Trump because that's what the party is. It's a party of one man. And the person who is the head of the party, although officially the title is co-chair, but the real head of the party is Laura Trump, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law. And she was picked because she's loyal and she's gonna demand loyalty from all the candidates around the country who expect to receive money from the RNC. The RNC is important because they control the biggest purse. And when you are a candidate running for US Senate, for example, and you don't believe in the big lie, or perhaps you think that we should respect juries like the one in New York in the election interference trial, yeah, that can get you crossways with the head of the Republican Party. And we've seen that with Larry Hogan, and we'll get to that. But it's more to it than that. You see now Lara Trump out there talking about election fraud, and that's nothing new. We've seen that before. But actions don't match the rhetoric because while they're out there saying, yes, it's about election fraud and cheating, we got to stop cheating. And uh, at the same time, they're trying to now encourage people to apply for their mail-in ballots. So the cheating is undefined. It's a way to soften their policy shift. So for a while it was absentee ballots, mail-in ballots are, uh, they're rife with fraud. I mean, look what Donald Trump said when he was president. Mail-in ballots are a very dangerous thing. They're, they're subject to massive fraud. And that continued even after the Iowa caucuses, he's still out there blasting election fraud in the form of absentee ballots. According to CNN, after being projected the winner of the Iowa caucuses in January, Trump had declared in his victory speech, we have to get rid of mail-in ballots because once you have mail-in ballots, you have crooked elections. And Trump, after becoming the presumptive nominee, said in an interview with Britain's GB News in March that anytime the mail is involved, you're going to have cheating. Well, that met the reality of the fact that, yeah, Democrats were running circles around them when it came to mail-in ballots. And mail-in ballots have been used for many years by the Republican Party to gain an edge over Democrats. Now it's shifted, it's, it's switched around. And now you have Democrats having this advantage of absentee ballots because the leader of the Republican Party is out there saying that absentee ballots are corrupt and so they all depend on election day voting and election day voting is a uh, risky proposition because you have weather issues, you have transportation issues, you have potential long lines and you have people turn away from the polls tired of waiting in line or the weather or they have other things to do in their busy lives and that's it. Too bad they didn't have access to a mail-in ballot. Well, Trump, 
and Laura Trump, they're all now back on the same page of supporting mail-in ballots. So they're using this rhetoric of we're going to go after election fraud and cheating. At the same time, they're trying to distract from the fact that they have changed their policy entirely. And now they have something called Swamp the Vote. And this is their new initiative to encourage, yes, mail-in balloting. The new effort, dubbed Swamp the Vote USA, comes as Republican officials ramp up calls for their voter base to embrace early voting and vote-by-mail options ahead of November's election. The new initiative is part of Trump Force 47, which is sponsored by the Republican National Committee and is focused on turning out voters in battleground states. It marks a sharp reversal from Trump's repeated calls to end the practice of mail-in voting altogether and his discouragement of Republicans from voting any other way But at the polls on election day, I mean, you get whiplash by the back and forth for mail-in voting, against mail-in voting, for it, against it, election fraud. Well, but not if our people do it. But, you know, one thing I agree with Laura about is that they should. We should all go after election cheating, like when you call up an election official after the election and demand that they find you 11,780 votes, or you try to interfere with an election in New York and... You saw the consequences there. So I think Laura Trump then is supportive of the conviction uh, in New York of Donald Trump for election interference, I, I guess, based on her comments about going after election cheating. And then there's the D.C. election interference case, one around January 6th, the one that has been held up by the U.S. Supreme Court. I guess Laura Trump wants that one to go just as much as the rest of us do. I know Jack Smith and Judge Chutkin want it to go as well. So as far as Laura Trump, though, this is not where it ends. It's also in her attempt to demand complete loyalty. That includes loyalty from Senate candidates like Larry Hogan. Although Maryland is a blue state, Larry Hogan is a popular Republican governor who has been a maverick of sorts and has, is popular because, in part, he takes on Donald Trump. Well, he pushed back against Donald Trump's claim that this election interference trial was politically motivated. Regardless of the result, I urge all Americans to respect the verdict and the legal process. At this dangerously divided moment in our history, all leaders, regardless of party, must not pour fuel on the fire with more toxic partisanship. We must reaffirm what has made this nation great, the rule of law. This is what Lara Trump had to say on CNN. Does the Republican National Committee support Larry Hogan for Senate? Well, uh, I, I'll tell you one thing. I don't support what he just said there. I think it's ridiculous. And I think anybody who's not speaking up in the face of of really something that should never again have seen the light of day a trial that would never have been brought against any other person aside from Donald Trump. But does Trump the RNC support his bid? The, the respect of anyone. Well, he doesn't I'll deserve to, the respect uh, of anyone? To you. He doesn't deserve the respect of anyone in the Republican Party at this point. And quite frankly, anybody in America, if that's the way you feel, that's very upsetting to hear that. So are you willing to cede the Senate seat in Maryland to the Democratic Party and not support Larry Hogan? What I'll tell you is that we, of course, want to win as a party, but that is a shame. And and I think he should have thought long and hard before he said that publicly. Do you are you willing to use Republican uh, Party resources to support his bid or not? It sounds like you're saying you're not. Well, I'll get back to you on all the specifics monetarily. But uh, what I can tell you is that as the Republican Party co-chair, I think he should never have said something like that. I think that's ridiculous. Ouch. (laughs) It really is incredible that you have Laura Trump and her cohorts ready to sacrifice the U.S. Senate just to assure complete loyalty to Donald Trump. One of Donald Trump's senior advisors, Chris LaCivita, also piled on by responding to Larry Hogan's tweet with the following. You just ended your campaign with 1.4 million views. That's a lot of eyeballs on that tweet. Well, despite all that, Trump endorse Larry Hogan after all that another flip-flop so yes so they were abandoning Larry Hogan and then they endorsed Larry Hogan and then Larry Hogan said he doesn't want Trump's endorsement (laughs) this is like days of our lives for those of you who watch soap operas or at least old enough to remember that one is that one even on the air anymore 
According to Politico, the former Maryland governor did not seek the endorsement or know about it in advance, according to a person familiar with the campaign. And the campaign's response to the endorsement didn't embrace or even acknowledge it. Instead, saying in a statement, Governor Hogan has been clear he is not supporting Donald Trump, just as he didn't in 2016 and 2020. Yeah, with friends like that, who needs enemies, right? I mean, you're, you've got uh, Donald Trump, I think, perhaps trolling you. Maybe Trump realized that he could do more to hurt Larry Hogan by endorsing him <laughs> than turning on him. I don't know. Uh, this whole thing with the RNC is just messed up. And it is a big advantage for the Democrats going into November. So when people tell you that this is about just Trump versus Biden, you have to also remind them now. It's also about the party infrastructure. It's about who's running the party, how much money they have, how the state parties are doing. And don't forget, just as another matter, it's about Dobbs and Roe versus Wade. I mean, I think that is another huge issue going into the election that a lot of people are talking about, but not as much as they should. Democrats continue to outperform in every election since the Dobbs decision. And the Supreme Court doesn't seem to make it any better in their continued uh, right wing uh, decisions that come down like bump stocks and all the other uh, shenanigans pulled by Justice Alito and Justice Thomas. So voters are not going to forget and women never forget. So that's the latest on the RNC. And as the world turns, I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on the Midas Touch Network. If you like this video, please like it. And leave a comment below and share with a friend. And I'll see you next time. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.